So Nick, I know this is your first time. Yep. So I will go ahead and introduce you. Everyone, this is Nick. He goes by Nick and just Nick. He's the product. <laughs> what is your title? VP of product? Yep, that's correct. And I am Chase in charge of the customer success team here at Lean Law. We've, uh, we've probably worked together before. So <laughs> Nick is joining us this month to go over um, one of the new products that he, one of the new projects, uh, features that he's been working on here at Lean Law, building and improving the product for us. Uh, so Fred and I thought, well, why not have the person who helps lead the direction of the product actually do one of these master classes with us? So yep. you can look forward to uh, having Nick join us for some of these moving forward. Awesome. And today's topic is custom fields. Uh, Hooray! <laughs> so yeah, it should be a, a fun discussion. Uh, might be a little bit lighter on time than some of the previous ones, but that's okay. We we think this is kind of a, a really powerful add-on that people can take advantage of. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And Chase, do you, any other ground rules before I get going? Uh, keep it mostly PG. No. <laughs> um, and just for context, a lot of you are probably already familiar. Lean Law does already have custom fields. Uh, but what Nick is going to be talking about is um, an, a, an addition, an improvement, an overhaul on the way we currently do custom fields to improve the flexibility, the usability. You can think of it as a, an entirely new product at the moment or new feature. At the moment, they exist simultaneously, but the goal is that eventually what we talk about today will end up taking over uh, the custom fields that you currently are familiar with. Yeah, and so like a, a quick agenda of what we were thinking about today is uh, first cover, you know, for those who hear custom fields and say, you know, what is that? What are we talking about? We'll do like a quick overview of what fields are, um, why we, we decided to kind of take a look at this and kind of how it could help firms. We'll take a look at a quick demo and then talk about how custom fields are going to be incorporated to other things within the lean law product. Um, so that's kind of the, the quick and dirty agenda. I do not have artistic skills like Fred, so I will not be using the whiteboard today. No. Unfortunately, I tried to think of a, a, a something to draw on this and uh, I couldn't. So, uh, you know, what are custom fields? If you've, if you've never heard of fields before, the, the, the closest analogy that I could think of is, uh, you know, everybody has an address book or a contact book. Some of you even remember the paper form and probably still use the paper form. Others uh, maybe just use their cell phone uh, to that, add income. <laughs> that good old Rolodex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, everybody has some of the same information that they put in about a contact, a name, a number, an email address. But in some cases, you know, I might want to know somebody's date of birth, but Chase might actually want to know how he met this contact. And so in his address book, he'll have this piece of information about where he met somebody. And in my address book, I'll have a, a field that tells me what their birthday is. So we're using kind of the same thing, but we get to personalize our address book a little bit. And that's what these custom fields allow you to do is to personalize your own information um, and so how does that apply to, to lean law? You know, we, ha we have these two pages of clients and matters that you, we give you some basic, um, fields within the info tab that you can tell us who these people are. So you get context clues, but there are some cases where other firms or firms, uh, want to add more personalized information about them. So one of the biggest practice areas that we've heard this request from is for intellectual property. So as you're filing for patents, uh, you might want to add in a field for the patent name. Uh, you might have some contract numbers, uh, a few other things. In real estate, you might want to track the, uh, the MLS number on a given matter. So you know, the, this idea of custom fields is a way that we can give firms the ability to kind of like personalize their clients and matter pages within Lean Law. So at a high level, that's what we're talking about here. That's how it applies to lean law. And uh, it's what we'll be going over a little bit more. So basically we're taking the Rolodex that you've had since the year 1982 and putting it into lean law. Yeah, this, exactly. this, the surprise integration that you never saw coming. Yeah. And, and so some other problems that we uncovered as we were going through this, and, you know, um, currently in QuickBooks Online, you have these things called custom fields. 
But if you're on a plus subscription, you only get three. And, and so that's kind of a hindrance. And the other thing is that they only limit you to 30 characters of a value to be on the invoice. So thinking through those problems, we created this way to not only in lean law, you can add more context clues, but you can actually select that these fields be present in the memo field of the invoice. So it's a way for us to still give you the personalization, still use these the values that are presented on them on a given client or matter when you go to bill and still make sure that the full length of those values are in the memo itself. And, and Chase, I think, is going to go through a demo here a little bit later and, and talk through that. So uh, a couple things that I wanted to mention is we are still wrapping up the development of this feature. So what you see is kind of in a in an alpha version, we're going to be releasing it in the next couple of weeks. We'll have some information at the end of this of how you guys can say, yeah, this is exciting. I want to take a look at it and you can sign up and we can enable it in your accounts. And the other thing too is um, there are some things in the future that we're going to be doing that, uh, that I'll talk about as well. And one of those is, you know, mapping the QuickBooks custom fields to our custom fields and a few other things. So yeah. Any questions so far from the chat? Doesn't look like we have anything so far. Right. They, they normally start rolling in when we get to the uh, the demo or getting to the, the new things that nobody's seen before. So I expect we'll we'll see some of those in a bit. Okay, perfect. Well, that, that was the, the stage that I wanted to set and happy to hand it over to you, Chase, to show off what we got. Yeah, absolutely. Let me pop over my screen here. There we go. If that's not showing up for anybody, let me know. So I wanted to first start with what custom fields currently look like in LeanLaw. Pretty, pretty easy, pretty basic. Uh, interestingly enough, this has actually gone through, I believe, three different versions. Uh, some of you that have been around for a while might remember the original custom fields, which uh, was set up using the custom form styles in QuickBooks, which was left a lot of room for improvement. Let's put it that way. That was V1. Uh, version two is the custom fields that we currently have, uh, which doesn't want to work in the demo account here. But many of you will be familiar with uh, this when we integrated with QuickBooks Online Advanced or when we added support for that. We also changed the custom field mapping to allow the fields that you create in QuickBooks to also be available in Leland and vice versa. So there was syncing there. Um, much better interface, much better UI. It wasn't just a text field at the bottom of the invoice. It actually started to begin to feel like the custom field mapping you've probably seen in your other online SaaS tools. So why did we feel the need to make a V3? Well, if you've used custom fields in either iteration uh, in Lean Law, you know there's quite a bit that's left, um, leaves, leaves you wanting. You current, currently you can't add much in the way of custom fields for clients and matters. Like Nick was saying, there's limitations on the characters when you try and put it on the invoices. So your client's not seeing as much information as you'd want. You might be running into you know, limitations on the custom fields Lean Law currently offers. Oh, I completely forgot about the other custom fields. The, um, the custom fields here that we give you for um, matters. And that's for a lot of firms, that's not enough. Having two firms, or excuse me, having two matters, two additional fields. There we go. Uh, <laughs> thank you. A third time's the charm, as we see. Um, having those two additional fields is not enough, especially like Nick was saying for um, intellectual property or real estate. It's not enough to just be able to track the, uh, the client's birthday and how you met them. You need all kinds of information about the case or the work that you're doing for them. So that's one of the main focuses of this V3 or version three of custom fields is let's not only give more options, but also make it available in more places, make it more functional, more functional and more flexible. So that's what it looks like today. It's, uh, it's a good attempt, <laughs> but, but we're ready for some improvement here. So let's take a look at what we've got going forward or what, uh, what you can look forward to. So we are currently in a development version of Lean Loss. So you might see some things that look a little bit out of place, but the main thing is uh, currently you won't have access to this set of options for the custom fields. If you would like to get access to it once it comes out, 
uh, I'll go ahead and Nick, if you've got the link, if you could post that in the chat for everyone. Um, first time we've done it this way, but you're able to uh, sign up with that form. And when this feature does go live or when we do an early beta with it, uh, we'll reach out to the folks that have, have signed up to uh, not only get your feedback to all, but also uh, give you a early insight or early taste into what what that looks like or how it's used. And Nick, actually that got sent to uh, hosts and panelists. You want to send that to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> yep. yep. So what does it look like now? Well, you'll notice now at the bottom, we've got field mapping. Great. Totally different look, which is, which is great. We've got some improvements here. So first off, this is an early development version. So the mapping to the QuickBooks custom fields doesn't currently work. So understand that will be available, but it's not currently. And it's going to look really similar or familiar to other things in Leanwell. You've got the column headers describing what the name of the field is, what it appears on or available on, the type, and then the status. Now, if you've used custom fields before in QuickBooks, you'll be familiar with the different types. Currently, LeanLaw only has the text option, but we'll be adding things like drop downs, numbers. Um, I think, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, most of the options that, uh, that QuickBooks allows for. Yep, exactly. So we've got a couple pre made here, but let's go through and take a look at what that actually looks like if we make a new one, what you'll be seeing for the first time. So we'll click New Custom Field. Got that description there. So what, what are we doing here? So like Nick was saying, we want to add custom fields to lots of different places. At the moment, they're only available on the invoice memo or on the client slash matter. Uh, but in the future, these will be available on things like your expenses, your fixed fees, um, other places on the invoice, right? Everywhere you've thought, hmm, it'd be really helpful if LeanLaw gave me the option to add X here, or if I could show this piece of information, this, the docket number, the the different numbers, the so many numbers that IP attorneys <laughs> use and have to track and keep keep account of. Right. Um, that's that's what this is doing. So we'll give it uh, give it a name here. Let's see, Nick, special field. There we go. Currently, we've just got the available uh, text option. Field visibility. This one's important. This selects whether it is at the client or the matter level. So if you're familiar with the client versus a matter accounting, same idea. Do you want this field to be tracked at the client level and apply it to all matters or just at the matter level? So it's going to depend on the type of, of work that you do. And if you do client or matter um, accounting or billing, keep that in mind. And then the last option here is invoice memo. Nick, do you want to talk about why invoice memo is an option here? Right. So, you know, we talked or I mentioned briefly that QuickBooks has this character limit on their custom fields, but we, we hear from plenty of firms that there's still this important information that they want to make sure is somewhere in the invoice when they send it to a client. So it gives that client more context around, you know, what is the particular matter? What are the particular items that they're being invoiced for? And so one of the great opportunities we have is to add this in the memo because the memo is kind of a free form. We do have a character limit there, but it's a lot more than the 30. And so we can, <laughs> we can a add a lot, yeah, just a little bit more. Uh, and so we can add a lot more of this, these context clues on a given invoice in that memo. And so what this means here is anytime you add a value to the Nick special field on a given client and you go to bill them and you push that invoice into QuickBooks, we're going to take whatever the value you you put on that client and add it as a, a memo item uh, on there. Sweet. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Enable it before you save it or go oh, yeah. back. And <laughs> yeah. Great time to talk about editing these. Let's see, not contract. We want a Nick special field. Here we go. So yeah. we, we've opened up the edit window. We want to make changes. First, we want to turn it on. This will toggle the other way once it's released. Yeah. Uh, green dot means it's good to go. Got the options here. So we'll go ahead and save that. You'll notice there was that delete button here. This is a super sweet feature, I think, that they've added and will be adding in other places. When you click delete, it says... One, it's no longer going to be available, but if it is currently used on something like we've got here, it'll say, hey, 
by the way, this is being used in X number of places. So you don't have to take a guess at where this is being used or if it's used at all. Lean Law just tells you, hey, so you're aware before you do this, keep that in mind. Yeah, just trying to help you guys get a little bit more context before <laughs> the leads fully fully go through the system. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't want to accidentally delete things for using. So Nick's special field we see here it is set for client and it will appear on our invoice memo, which is great. So let's use that. Go ahead and open up a matter here and we will pick consulting. There we go. So in order to access the client here, we'll go ahead and click that matter name again. Now we're looking at the client's information and hey, look at that, Nick's special field down here at the bottom. If we wanna fill it in, we can click edit. Give that a value and then click update. So now when we go and create an invoice for this, for this MCHX client, Nick's special field with the value hello will appear on that. So if we go to, let's create a time entry. Example entry, save. Create a quick invoice for that. There we go. And if we take a look at that draft, hey, look at that. Not yet. Yeah, so it's only once we, this is still in development, so we still need to add it in that summary section. But once you push it into QuickBooks here, it, it should add those. Yep, and while we wait for that, we've got a question from Karen here. Do the fields have to be on the invoice or can they just be set up and used for us to perhaps search or categorize? Uh, that's a great question. So this was gonna be in the, the bucket of what are we gonna use these fields for in the future? Um, and, and so one of the things that we wanna use these for is in reporting, right? Like th this is a great way that you should be able to group by or, or look at different things by a given field. Um, there, there's other things that we want to use, um, adding them into time entries, adding them into expenses so you can categorize them a little bit more. Um, so yes, they don't have to be, our, our vision for this isn't that they have to be on a given invoice, uh, but we want to use them throughout the rest of the product. And I think if you open up the sample client here, um, Chase, this is a good example of how those various custom fields at the bottom of the memo there get added mm -hmm. to the invoice. Yep, right there, contract number down at the bottom. So we've got our, our wonderful payment link from Gravity, some information about the trust account. And then at the bottom, uh, this client is only set up with one of those fields. And so that's the only one that appears here in the memo. And Karen, again, just to touch on this, like this is very early and yeah, we, we have the search that you brought up is actually a great, Great comment like search and filtering within clients and matters or reports or even on the billing tab here is another place that we you know think that these custom fields can be very very helpful for you guys to find the information you need or a group of clients and matters or time entries or whatever it might be right and so like nick was talking about there this this is a pretty significant improvement on a lot of the workflows in lean law and it's really up to you to decide how you want to take advantage of this if at all do you want to be able to track different values um, on your time entries? Do you need to communicate different things? It's, it allows for a lot more personalization and customizing in LeanLaw, which is fantastic to see. Uh, will the option be on the matter or on the custom field for whether it shows up on the invoice? Yeah, I'll take that. So on that settings page within the field mapping section where you create them, edit them, activate, deactivate, delete, whatever. Uh, we put it on the field itself, whether it's going to show up. So you, you would have to select each individual field that you want to be on the memo at the field view, not, the, not at the, the matter of client. Sweet. Nick, was there anything else that you'd wanted to highlight in the, the current version of this? Um, no, I, I'm just really curious how other people are going to use this. Cause like I said, we've, we've heard this a lot from uh, intellectual property practices, real estate practices, a few others that, mm -hmm. you know, that info tab that we give you with those default, you know, items that you can fill out sometimes isn't enough on a given client or matter to, 
to you know give you context of what you're dealing with or who you're dealing with and you always got to search around all over the place so i'm just really excited to see how firms use these what type of fields people create what the feedback comes in for like hey this would be really great if you could do xyz with these fields. like karen you brought up already be able to search by these different fields across things like that's great um so yeah i'm just really excited to see how people are going to use this going forward Got another great question for you. What determines the order that they appear on the invoice? So we had a an in-house bet of how soon this this question would come up. And uh, is it I'll, too late to get in on that? <laughs> no, I don't think so, Chase. No. Um, so yeah, that that is actually in the in the plans for the quick quick next iteration. Right now, we don't allow for ordering. So what we want to do is add this custom field section of how you how you order them in the invoice presentation. So again, that invoice presentation has everything you want about setting up an invoice so that we're gonna add in a new section there where if you have enabled these fields to be in the invoice BIMO, you can reorder them and drag and drop and put them in whatever order you want. But right now uh, we're kind of predetermining how those, how those go into the invoice. And this is a great opportunity to, to kind of plug um, why, why we show a lot of these things is to get user feedback and be asked questions like Karen's asking here. Uh, the earlier we get asked those, the sooner we're able to bring that back to the team and say, hmm, we were getting a lot of feedback about this. Right. Maybe we should consider changing it or doing that differently. Exactly. Cool. So I think that's it for the way that it currently sits and what the the previous version looks like. So Nick, if you actually want to talk about and maybe showcase um, what what the growth and development this, what the growth and development of this is going to look like, like as in where else are we going to see this used? What are, uh, you kind of talked about the use cases before, but what is the, the expansion of this look like? Yeah, and we've touched on a couple as we've gone here uh, from some good questions. So one of the big things, you know, you touched on it, Chase. We have custom fields all over the place. They are just, you know, in four different areas, I think, on four different settings pages uh, within the app. So one of the main goals is consolidating all those into this one page, making sure we, we cover all our bases for what those field mappings did. And, and so it's consolidating, making things as simple as possible when it comes to field mapping and creating fields. Uh, two is we, we do realize that we need to attach these to a QuickBooks custom field as well. And so making sure that, that that integration where we can push values into a QuickBooks custom field uh, is ready to go and, and, and done. And then there's things that I mentioned before, you know, adding, adding these fields on time entries or expenses, fixed fees, whatever it might be, just kind of using these as a way that you can customize and personalize the various items that you're creating and billing for within lean law and, and, it, then, and it it's i want to kind of come back to that again that it's not just you know here's your set of here's here's the parameters right here's the blocks you can play with no it's it's really more of a sandbox um each firm is now is going to be able to create and use these fields in whatever way they see fit so uh, Lee actually asked uh, or said, it'd be great to see this in receivables reports. That's another excellent example of, hey, the, the firm sees a use here. You don't have to come to Lean Law to ask how it's going to work. Can we set it up? Is it possible? You just pop right in and, and do it. Yeah. And reporting is another big area in the future. You know, like the, these, these fields can give us a lot of power in our reporting to, to like get really, really granular into subsets of your clients or matters and, and so we're we're that's also on the future roadmap like how to how do we include these whether it's grouping by or as a piece of data when you build out a report mm -hmm. um and as well as expanding to other types so you know we mentioned we're just handling text today um but they're you know quickbooks gave us a great kind of roadmap of other types that we should also in <laughs> you know support and so those are drop downs dates and numbers. So those those first three there are gonna be the, the big ones, but there's other things like emails, URLs, a whole bunch of different types that we can can add into this. The, the thing is we've kind of set the foundation here where we can 
iterate through and add more flexibility and functionality into these fields. So are these fields going to sync to fields in QuickBooks? Like if I add a custom field to a client in lean law and add a value, will that value sync into QuickBooks? Only so once we make that connection or give you that option in the editing field of the, the custom field itself, there'll be a new section around which field within QuickBooks do you want us to sync the value to? Uh, gotcha. So within this screen, there'll be another option that'll allow you to select the uh, QuickBooks custom field. Looks like uh, Maria missed the first 12 minutes and is curious, <laughs> what is the reason for field mapping? Nick, what's, what's your elevator pitch? Uh, the the two-second, two-sentence elevator pitch is essentially to give more flexibility uh, to every firm where they can add customized fields on the client matter to give a little bit more context, give a little bit more personalization on those records. Uh, one of the things I led off with was uh, intellectual property firms and real estate. We got a lot of feedback saying, hey, your info tab on the client matter is great, but there's some unique fields that we need to get context on what we're doing. And we need those to also be present on the invoice. So fields are just a way that you can kind of customize your info tab and, and, and bring those values into the invoice if you need. And it's, it's not just for external use, right? It, it also allows for firms to track things and make information right. known internally. Uh, say for example, we needed to track, um, out, say the firm has something besides responsible or originating. They have uh, the point of contact attorney, uh, yep. the, the person the firm goes to, or um, I, it, <laughs> I was going to say their, their preferred order at McDonald's. Like it, it's really <laughs> up to the firm to determine uh, how they want to use this, both for the client to see, but also for internal. Um, currently, your best version of that in Lean Law is going to be your internal notes or billing instructions. Uh, but that's often not enough, uh, depending on how much information the firm is tracking. Um, maybe they need additional contact information, um, additional references, right? It's, it's really, really sky's the limit um, for what you're able to do here. Yeah, we've also heard when you, whenever you do uh, work on behalf of like big corporations, they, they demand these things must be on the invoice, otherwise we can't process them. And so again, this is another way where you can set up those fields add the value for that specific client or matter, and then make sure that they get onto the invoice so that, you know, mm -hmm. you guys, you guys have all those unique pieces that the client needs to pay off that invoice. Right. Right. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions about the custom fields or field mapping. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share and actually share that uh, form again. If you're interested in, in getting early access to this or keeping up to date on what we're doing here, you can add your email to the list and we'll reach out with uh, updates and opportunities to try this out earlier. And I, I do want to mention too, this is only available on the pro version of Lean Law. So if you're currently on core, um, make sure that you either check with the firm manager or if you are the firm manager, uh, check with our support team if you'd like to try this out. Um, the other thing, uh, unlimited number of fields so people can go wild. We're not capping that. And it's uh, just included in that pro subscription. Mm -hmm. So no additional add-on, anything like that. It's just kind of a nice, what we hope is a nice add-on to your guys' kind of tool set that you can use within Lean Law. Yeah, Nick said something interesting to me yesterday when we were uh, doing some some final touches on what we we're gonna discuss here. He he described it as an expansion or a, a DLC, extra extra yeah. content for, for games, something I've spent probably too much time on. Uh, but it was kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. Like Lean Law is always changing and looking for ways to improve. And we want to make sure that what we're adding is, is interesting and exciting to the people actually using Lean Law. Um, and this, we hope, is the beginning, not the beginning, but a continuation of, of those exciting features that aren't just oh, cool, I'm going to put it on my shelf, but are things that you're able to, you know, in a weird way, get excited about the software that you're using at work um, and feel a, a sense of, you know, hey, I was able to contribute to that. I'm, I'm using something that I got to give feedback on, right? So, all right. So the last bit for the masterclass today, definitely a much shorter one than when we've got Fred on. 
uh, is uh, upcoming features and products. Nick, what, uh, what, what kind of secrets do you have for us? Yeah, so um, one of the big things we're, we're taking a look at is um, how the invoice gets delivered to clients. And, you know, a, lo a lot of firms are using the default email builder, but there's a lot of times and a lot of information that's missing that we can kind of help with things like an account balance, uh, helping do automatic recharges of evergreen amounts and a whole bunch of other things, even giving summaries of the invoice itself before the client clicks in and sometimes gets sticker shock with how many pages there are and they got to keep scrolling. So one of the big things we're, we're tackling is uh, we're going to do our own version of the invoice email delivery system where where you're gonna have, you can have a settings page where you can pull in these different modules to kind of give a custom feel to it, have payment links that not only pay for the invoice, but pay for the entire balance. Or like I mentioned, we're gonna be fleshing out a lot of that, that evergreen recharge as well so that they can pay the invoice and bring their evergreen balance back up to whatever the minimum threshold is. Um, so that's gonna be the next big thing uh, that'll be released in the next couple of months. Next couple of months, we want it now. I know. I know. Right now. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little. It it does take a little bit of time. Just just like the the tight like it's just it's just a couple of lines of code. Come on, it can't be that hard. Yep. Cool. Well, I'm not seeing any additional questions or things to be answered. So we'll, we'll give a couple of minutes here, but um, I think I think we're actually just about done. Uh, like Nick said, bit of a shorter one since uh, this isn't fully out yet, but we're still excited to see uh, sneak peeks like this and uh, hopefully more to come. So we'll, next month, like Nick said, we'll be going over the uh, invoice email delivery, giving you way more functionality and options within LeanLaw to uh, control the delivery of your invoices through email, which we're excited to see. And I think, aren't we taking July off of Masterclass for the summer? I believe so. Is that or August? Okay. You will see updates or you'll get <laughs> invites to the next one. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that in the, the wrap up email for this, that we actually include the real date uh, for the next time you can join us. But I, I do believe Nick, you'll be joining us for that one as well. Correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we'll go over that one as well. Great. Okay. Well, Nick, unless you've got something else to add. No, thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to joining more of these and really looking forward to your guys's feedback and, you know, please sign up. Uh, or if you have more questions, you can just send us some uh, intercom messages and I review those, Chase reviews those so we can yep. get you whatever answers uh, to the questions you have. Okay. And with that, we will see you all next time. Thank you so much for joining us. See you guys.